Hey everyone, in this video we are going to use Asset Forge to create a simple tree. This is going to be a two-step process because the way Asset Forge works, you have all these pre-made blocks that you can assemble horizontally or vertically. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a custom block that's going to be one level of the tree, one layer of the tree, turn it into a custom selectable reusable block, and then we're going to stack it vertically. That will let us rotate it, scale it, and things like that. So first, with the category selector, change this to primitives. And we're going to take the pyramid. We're going to place it there. And we're going to do a couple of things. So let's scale this down. And you scale it by taking that top, top dot. You left click, hold, and then you just scale it down. And I'm just eyeballing this. There's nothing precise about this. There's going to be some basic processes we repeat. But this is purely a matter of aesthetics, whatever you feel looks right. Now, before we go any further, let's give this a color. So we go, we could modify this, okay? But since it's a default mat, I really don't want to. I'd rather have it have its own custom mat. So new material. Choose a green. Choose a green. Click on it. There we go. So we're going to click on this. And then you're going to, on your keyboard, press Control D. You get a little message saying that a block was cloned. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate this now. As you can see, this has shown that it will rotate 15 degrees at a time. So let's go ahead and rotate that one, uh, twice. So rotate it at 30. Duplicate that new block. So again, Control D, rotate it 30. And now these should all be 30 degrees apart. So that is going to be one layer of the tree. And again, like I said, it's not really fancy. It's meant to be a really a low polygon kind of stylized tree. But this is now going to be the block that we can reuse over and over again. So what you're going to do, two things. A, always make sure that you save your project. So when you choose save or save as, you're saving the project itself. Okay. And then if, when you export model, that's turning this into a model that's now usable and accessible to other applications. Like you're going to save this as an OBJ, which can be utilized by Unity and other applications. So go ahead and do that. Save it wherever you want as a project and then export model. You're going to want all these defaults. Make sure merge block is checked. But again, these are all the defaults, so you should be fine. Now, this is important. You're going to click on export. When you click on export, you're going to have the typical navigation window. Navigate to the Asset Forge folder. You're going to open the Asset Forge folder, and you're only going to have like five or six folders in there. Open the one that's called Collections. Create a new folder. Call it whatever you want, and that's where you want to save this. So again, you want to export this to a folder of your making inside the Collections folder inside of Asset Forge. Now, I've already done that prior to this, so I'm just going to delete this because I don't need it anymore. So, for instance, if I click on the selector again, you'll see this folder called Town. You won't have it because this is a custom folder I made, and so any OBJs, any objects that are in that folder will now be accessible as a block, and it's right here. So we're just going to click and place it there. You can see it's darker, and you can see it's not quite as squashed. Again, it's purely a matter of aesthetics. You can make it look like whatever you want. Now, one of the reasons why we did this, again, so it's reusable, but also we turned this into a single block, so I don't have to worry about selecting multiple objects. It's a single object now. So now this process is really going to be rinse and repeat. What we're going to do, we copy this, we rotate it, scale it smaller horizontally, Maybe scale it a little bit vertically because you'd expect the as this to go higher to be more pointed. And then we're just going to rinse and repeat that for a few minutes. So control D. Again, you get the little message saying it's cloned. This time you want to use the arrow. I'm going to use two clicks. You can do whatever you want as far as how much space you want. And now I'm just going to shrink this one in one direction, one in the other direction. And now we're going to recenter it. So all these to have the same center, you're going to click on the position tool here, and you want them all to have 0, 0. So 0x, zero 0z, zero and we're going to move the y in a consistent amount of space. 
So it doesn't look like much of anything yet, but again, it, it, it's by repeating this over and over again, it quickly starts to take shape. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to rotate this too. So just one click. And if you recall, this, to make these points separated, we did two clicks. So to keep them from lining up, you want to do just one click. So rather than rotating it 30 degrees, you only rotate it at 15 degrees. And if we unselect this, you can see now the point is here, and you have a space here. So we're just going to keep doing that. So we select that one, and again, rinse and repeat. Control D, move up two clicks, shrink one, shrink one, recenter, zero, zero. And again, you can make this stretched vertically if you want. I'm not going to this time. I'm going to wait till we get to the top to do that. And now just do it again. And now actually we need to rotate. So again, one click. So what's going to happen is these will be lined up. So every other one will be lined up. So this one will line up with the one above it. Control D. Whoops. Every once it kind of bugs out like that. Now, if you want to know if it's in the right place, this should be at zero. It is. That means this one would be at point two. It is. This one would be point four. It is. This one's at point six. So I got it back to the right place. And again, they don't have to be equidistant. You can make this look more gangly or whatever, you know, kind of make it stretched out and bare in other parts, whatever you want to do. So we'll shrink this again. One click. One click. I don't think I shrunk it already. And even if I did, like I said, it's not exact. It's just whatever you think looks right. And we do a single click rotate. Now you might think that's sufficient. You could just put a trunk at the in the bottom and call it a day. And one of the nice things about this is you can easily make trees and have them be very different is what I should have said. You can make multiple types of trees. So you can make ones that are short and squat. You can make ones that are taller. You could even change the color on some of these. So it's not exactly the same color. All right, so let's continue. Control D, two clicks up, 0.8, so we know it's moving the right distance. We can shrink that, shrink that, center it. I think we'll just do two more. I, I don't want to bore you guys. I think you get the idea of how we're doing this. And again, we'll rotate it. I keep forgetting that for some reason. And now I have to zero, zero it out again. All right. Okay, I'd say two more. So control D, two clicks, one, one. Rotate. Sorry, brief splice there. So like I said, a couple more times. So control D, couple notches, scale, scale, zero, zero. All right, I think that's good. Now, it's not as readily evident in this one, but you can see that it's kind of a curvature by doing this. And the reason for that is each layer is being decreased by a decreasing amount, so it's not linear. So this one, 1, 1, we're talking about just the horizontal, okay, the X and the Z. This one is 0 0.9, 0 0.9, so the difference is 0 0.1. We go to the next one, this one's 0 0.81, 0 0.81. So the difference from this to this was 0 0.1, 0 
the difference between this and this was 0 0.09. And now this one, 0 0.81, 0 0.81, and we click on the next one, is 0.73. So now it decreased again. So if we decrease these by the same amount, it would have just a nice slant to it. So by doing this, it kind of makes a curvature. It's not as readily evident this time. And I think it's because I didn't stretch these. If I had stretched these more vertically, it would have been more obvious. But it gives it a little bit of a curvature. And again, trees grow different ways. You can make these as, styles, as stylized as you want. So maybe you want it to be more cylindrical. So maybe you wouldn't do the scaling of each level. What you would do is you would keep it the same. Okay, I think that's just about it. What you can do, if you select these, the way I'm selecting them all is I click on the first one, I hold shift, keep shift down, and I just keep clicking. Now we'll just move this up. Again, nothing exact, just kind of eyeballing it, and we'll take another primitive. Actually, I'm not going to scale it there. I might accidentally scale the tray. So we'll scale this down. Doesn't have to be perfectly round. A lot of people probably won't even see the trunk depending on where it is, um, it, whatever you're using this for. Now, the only thing is, let's see if it lets us create another material. Okay, it did. For some reason, sometimes it doesn't let you. I'm not sure if it's when you're in a project, but occasionally it's not let me create a new material. So now we're just going to take like an orange color, get a nice brown, and then click on that. Uh, let's make that darker. And now we know that the X and the Z coordinates are zero. So with this selected, we can just do zero, zero, and know that it's centered. I mean, you can double check if you want, but we said that every layer has a zero, zero to it. And then this you can save again. You can save this as a project. So you'd go to File, Save As, and you save this as a project. That way you can come back and make changes to it. But then don't forget to export it as a model. And if you're going to use this as another block, which you could, so you'd again export this. And when you choose export over here, you would once again choose the asset forge folder, the collections subfolder, and the subfolder you created inside of collections, and you would save it there. Now, if you're not going to use this as another block and you're just going to use it as like a prefab or something like that in Unity, then you can save the, the OBJ because that's the type it's going to save it as if you leave the defaults. You can just save it wherever you want and then just drag and drop it into your Unity project. Okay, so I think that should do it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. I might do another variance of the tree. Uh, this is very angular. Like I said, you kind of have a little bit of a curvature, but it's not that obvious. I would have needed to probably scale these out a little bit more and maybe made the change more dramatic. But anyways, I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any requests, if you want to see other things, uh, just let me know and say, can you make you know XYZ object, that kind of thing. And um, please enjoy the rest of your night.